I love wholesome characters. Good people with big hearts that just want to put love out into the world and see others succeed. But I also really, really love scumbags. But if I find one single dog hair when I get back, I'll rub sand in your dead little eyes. Very good, sir. I also need you to go buy sand. Yes, sir. I don't know if they grade it, but... Of course. These characters are total jerks, and in real life, you would want to get as far away from them as possible. These kinds of people are rude, hurtful, self-destructive, arrogant, and just completely unpleasant to be around. But as soon as they're in a work of fiction, I just can't get enough. Sort of. See, a character being a scumbag doesn't instantly make them appealing to me. There has to be something more to them, or the overall storytelling in the work which is what I would like to get into today. But before jumping into things, I want to give a big thank you to the sponsor of today's video, Omaze. These guys are trying to change the world of charitable giving, getting people hyped up so that nonprofits can spend less time fundraising and more time actually doing the work they set out to do. So far, Omaze has raised over $150 million for charity, and I have even been donating to them since before they became a sponsor. Right now, Omaze is giving you the chance to win a custom Model S Tesla Plaid S Apex by Unplugged Performance for a great cause, the Juju Foundation. This cutting-edge Tesla is top of the line, with a range of 396 miles and goes from 0 to 60 in 1.99 seconds. Unplugged pulled out all the stops on customization, with a vegan bamboo leather interior, a wide body kit, and a satin white wrapped exterior with carbon fiber accents. On top of that, taxes and shipping are included for winners in the US. Go to my link to enter for a chance to win this luxurious car while also helping out the Juju Foundation get scholarships, bikes, musical instruments, and much more to children in need and underserved communities. I've already entered myself, and I hope you do as well. But now, let's get back to the video. Okay, so before we can really start, we need to get an understanding of what these types of characters actually are, because it's an archetype with a ton of nuance. A scumbag slash jerk character really isn't evil per se. They're not deranged or psychopaths, but just characters who are flawed and generally don't treat people kindly. The Joker is a homicidal maniac an agent of pure chaos. He wants to kill us all just so he can laugh over our graves. It's a little bit different than this space bounty hunter who's a jerk to everyone around him and just wants to spend as much time as possible at space hooters. For me personally, a scumbag character has to be, at the very least, fun or entertaining in order for me to like them, and I think this sets them apart from the type of characters that are just unabashed grumps. Those guys tend to just be one note, oh, that's the angry guy energy, whereas jerk characters have a lot more versatility. They're motivated by self-interest, so they'll tend to be willing to go along with stuff if they can see the value of what's in it for themselves, and that often leads to humorous situations where other characters are trying to convince or manipulate them into doing something. Scumbag characters also tend to radiate drama. They cause tension, cause problems, and throw monkey wrenches into even the most well-thought-out plans. See, one of my toxic traits is that even though I try to actively avoid drama in my life, I am a fiend for gossip. If one of my friends has some piping hot tea, then I am right there to listen with a bag of popcorn. I don't care if I don't know the person or will never meet them, hearing about chaos going on in someone else's life is like cathartic schadenfreude. What's great about fictional characters, though, is that, well, they're not real. You don't actually have to deal and put up with them. They can just be a train wreck that you can't take your eyes off of, and it's socially acceptable to watch all of that instead of being trashy yourself, like me. But also with fiction, there's no limit to the kinds of drama and scenarios that can be set up. For example, my favorite superhero of all time is Booster Gold. He's a disgraced football player from the future that came back in time in order to find fortune and glory by using his future knowledge to stop crime and collect corporate sponsors. Well, in one of his outings in the show Justice League Action, Booster pulled a Jurassic Park and brought a bunch of dinosaurs into the future in order to set up a theme park. And of course, that goes horribly wrong. Those are some wacky antics, and I love that that's just just a minor inconvenience for the Justice League. They can basically be like, don't invite Booster Gold to game night. Remember that time that he brought a bunch of Triceratops into the 21st century? Hate that guy. But in a less lighthearted sense, scumbag characters can also give us an opportunity to indulge in some of the darker thoughts that every single one of us absolutely has in a somewhat healthy way. Or hell, maybe you're more on the straight and narrow, but these kinds of characters can be clever or savage in a way that you could never possibly consider because that line of thinking is too over the line for your moral compass. The big reason why I like these kinds of characters though is because they can teach us a lot about ourselves for better or for worse. When a jerk is written well, they're not presented as being in the right. You're laughing at them, not with them. 
It's horrifying that Dennis Reynolds has an entire system to emotionally manipulate women into sleeping with him, and then he psychologically torments them to get one final hookup. But It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia makes it incredibly clear that he is a disgusting creep, and the show punishes Dennis and the rest of the characters by consistently putting them in a worse off position than when the episode began. When a jerk character is well written, their arrogance, cruelty, etc. are presented as character flaws, something that needs to be overcome. To go back to my example of Booster Gold, he ends up becoming a legitimately heroic character. He's what's called a Time Master, one of the guardians of the time stream that protects it from villains and major alterations. However, his previous reputation as an asshole glory hound makes Booster Gold the last person that people would possibly expect to be in this highly important role. To make things even more interesting, Booster has to keep up this scumbag persona whenever he's in the present, actively knowing that his personal reputation is in the gutter as a result. Ironically, he's doing some of the most important work in the multiverse, and rightfully deserves praise and admiration for his service, but he's never allowed to be properly thanked for his job. But you don't have to write a character to where they'll have a sudden epiphany and then boom, they're instantly well-adjusted members of society. It's frankly realistic for these changes to be small and take time to affect their personality. Sometimes they'll slip back to where they were before and or have the consequences of their actions leave them further broken. What matters though is that the writer depicts the character as actually being capable of change. My favorite example of this is one of the two shows that is tied for being my all-time favorite, Bojack Horseman. The titular character is a whirlwind of bad decisions that sends him down a dangerous path of substance abuse. However, his character arc isn't simple and certainly not clean. He makes great advances in his mental health but frequently slips, but thankfully by the end of the show he has noticeably grown a lot, and we as viewers can tell that he has earned it as we've been along for the whole ride, witnessing the several highs and catastrophic lows along the way. What Bojack helped me realize is that I love scumbag characters because they can be used as vessels to learn important life lessons. Sometimes it's easier to understand how to make changes in your own life when you're able to take a step back and view the situation happening to someone that isn't you. Bojack Horseman specifically has helped me identify a lot about my self-destructive tendencies, and the show has sparked many, many moments of introspection that I'm able to take to my therapist, who gives me the tools that I need in order to tackle those issues head on. You can't keep doing shitty things and then feel bad about yourself like that makes it okay. You need to be better. Another great example is my favorite Green Lantern, Guy Gardner. He was, and let's be honest, still is an annoying asshole. And hell, plenty of characters literally saw his asshole when he mooned them in space, with Batman noting that he needs to shave. Guy has evolved into a really thoughtful character who is consistently still growing and tackling his anger issues, going so far as to literally become a Red Lantern fueled by rage, and he overcame that. But one of the reasons why I want to touch on Guy Gardner in particular is because he's a good example of how masculinity doesn't always have to be toxic. Sure, most of us men are taught a really unhealthy depiction of it, but with time and introspection, we can grow past it, while simultaneously deciding for ourselves what it means to be a man. However, in Guy's case, it's still okay to come out the other side of that growth as a man's man, but in a much healthier way. But of course, there's still the issue of awful characters that aren't presented as being in the wrong, where their awful nature is shown as aspirational or even heroic, where the work itself seems to praise the character for the ends justifying the means. But even when a piece of media is doing a good job of showing that the character is in the wrong, there's plenty of fans who entirely miss the point that it's trying to convey and are ignorant to the lessons that the work is trying to teach. Take for instance the King of Scumbag protagonists, Rick Sanchez. One of the most famous episodes in all of Rick and Morty is the one where he turns himself into a pickle. Funniest shit I've ever seen. But the entire reason that he turned himself into a pickle in the first place was to literally avoid going to therapy. There is a great monologue from the therapist about how there's people, like Rick, that refuse to put in the work to grow as human beings, and that ultimately, making terrible decisions and hurting both yourself and the people around you is a choice. But hey, let's forget all that and bubble up a dub dub. At the end of the day, my fascination with these types of characters is a complex thing that I don't think I will ever fully understand. But hopefully this video did a decent enough job of breaking down some of my thoughts and feelings. If you have any insights of your own, then I would love to hear about them down there in the comments below. But anyway, I hope you learned at least a little something new, and hopefully I'll see you next time.